You don't want to give a militant Islamic regime fired by this fanaticism, you don't want to give them nuclear weapons. They don't have them today. And the United States and Israel working together can stop them from getting it tomorrow. It's not a foregone conclusion. Last week's Middle East trip by President Biden was simply about a fist bump and Saudi oil. Of course, that's what much of the media focused on. But as you are surely aware, there were several more important things. Joining us early today from Jerusalem, the former right-hand man to Benjamin Netanyahu, Israeli ambassador to the United States, Ron Dermer. Ron Dermer, good to see you again. Good to see you, Doug. Pleasure to be with you. You served as the Israeli ambassador to the United States from 2013 to 2021. I'm, I'm going to ask you the broadest of all possible questions here. How has the world changed since you served as ambassador to the United States, for better or worse? Well, I think in the Middle East, it's, uh, it's turned for the worse, and primarily because the United States has stopped confronting Iran and has started appeasing Iran. And you've seen that appeasement over the last year and a half. I think it's very bad for the region, for the region's security. It's bad for Israel. It's bad for our Arab neighbors. Uh, and I think it's bad for the United States of America. I think the previous administration had a policy of being very tough with Iran. It took them a few years to build that policy. They had crippling economic sanctions against Iran. Uh, Trump had a credible military threat against the Iranian regime, particularly after he took out the world's biggest terrorist, Qasem Soleimani. And I thought that policy should continue. Instead, a new administration came in and decided they're going to go back into this terrible nuclear deal. They're going to appease Iran. And in the last year and a half, I think the situation has just gotten worse. And I was hoping that when Biden came to the region, uh, he, that he would maybe change course uh, and that he would decide to stop the policy of appeasement and go back to confronting Iran. That's not only good for the security of the region, it's good for peace. Remember, we had four peace agreements, the Abraham Accords in 2020, because the United States led the effort to confront Iran. And in doing so, under the leadership of President Trump, we were able to bring the Israel and the Arab states together under American leadership. And I think we should return to that policy. The, the trouble I, I have with that argument is it seems to me that uh, Iran's acquisition of a nuclear weapon is probably, to some degree, a foregone conclusion. Now, whether they do it more above ground uh, under the agreement of this nuclear proposal that the Biden administration is working on and other European nations are working on, or whether they subvert their activity, move it underground vis-a-vis -vis what was happening during the Trump administration, they're going to move in that direction. Not if we stop them, Doug. I disagree with you. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion, and it better not be a foregone conclusion, because this is a militant Islamic regime that not only calls for the destruction of Israel, it calls uh, for the destruction of our Arab neighbors. And this is a regime that leads, remind you, your listeners, I mean, your viewers, millions of people in chance of death to America. You don't want to give a militant Islamic regime fired by this fanaticism you don't want to give them nuclear weapons. They don't have them today. And the United States and Israel working together can stop them from getting it tomorrow. It's not a foregone conclusion. Remember, Doug, in 1981, Israel took the action to take out uh, Saddam Hussein's nuclear weapons program at Osirak. In 2007, Israel took out Syria's nuclear program. Uh, and we can act together. And I think with a credible military threat, we won't have to uh, take out that program militarily. But without that threat, I think we're on a path towards war. And we have to do whatever we can do to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons. It's not a foregone conclusion. There's still time to stop it. Uh, and I hope that uh, the United States will change its policy. As for Israel, we will do whatever we have to in order to defend ourselves. And Iran is a regime that openly calls and actively works to destroy Israel. And I believe every single Israeli government, and I hope that every single Israeli government will be committed to preventing that regime mm -hmm. from developing nuclear weapons. How much time does Israel and its Arab allies have against Iran before they do acquire a nuclear weapon? Well, we, we don't have a lot of time. Now, understand, Doug, you remember the deal was made in 2015 uh, under President Obama. And the problem with that deal is that it puts restraints on Iran's nuclear program and those restraints are automatically removed after a number of years. And about year 10 to 15, somewhere in that period, Iran breakout time, which is the amount of time they, ha the, they can turn fissile material into military-grade fissile material necessary for a nuclear weapon, 
the breakout time for Iran was close to zero in year 12. That's 2027. That's if you're in a deal. The problem with a nuclear deal with Iran is that Iran doesn't get to the bomb by violating the deal. They get to the bomb by keeping the deal. So that's why the decision of President Trump to walk away from the deal was the right decision, the right decision for America, the right decision for Israel, the right decision for your Arab allies. But right now, what has happened is Iran keeps inching closer and closer and closer to that nuclear breakout capacity, and they've gotten zero pushback from the United States. I'll tell you something that a lot of people don't know. From the time that President Trump took out Qasem Soleimani on January 2nd, 2020, for the next 10 months before the U.S. presidential election in 2020, Iran did not advance its nuclear program one iota because there was a credible military threat. The second you had that change of government in the United States, the second you had that election, the uh, Iranians started to move ahead with their program. What we need to do is restore a credible military threat against Iran's program. It prevented them from breaking out in the past, and it can prevent them from breaking out in the future. The problem we have today, Doug, is that after the debacle in Afghanistan, it's very hard to restore a credible military threat against any regime. Uh, and I hope that the Biden administration will change course quickly, because if they don't, it's going to force Israel to take action. And I think the best outcome is not military action, not a nuclear-armed Iran, but a peaceful resolution in this problem. But we can't get there without a credible military deterrent. Hi, I'm Doug McElway, and thank you for watching Centerpoint. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Leave a comment below and keep the conversation going by sharing this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.